President of the United States. Please be seated. Well, Don Hodell, John Rogers, and everyone here, thank you all for coming. You know, when they told me that today's event was the Presidential Historic Preservation Awards, I said, oh no, not another occasion to honor me. <laughs> Besides, if anybody deserves credit for this President's historic preservation. It's Nancy. <laughs> but then I was delighted to learn that I got to give the awards, not receive them. And it's more fun that way anyway. We've, we're here to honor those of you who honor us with your respect for our past and concern for our future. And the future of our civilization, the historian Lewis Mumford once wrote, depends upon our ability to select and control our heritage from the past to alter our present attitudes and habits, and to project fresh forms into which our energies may be freely poured. Well, today, we're here to honor all of you who have intertwined our hopes for the future of our civilization with a deep respect for the glories of our heritage. In 1966, the National Historic Preservation Act became this nation's primary historic preservation legislation. One of the Act's main goals is to encourage all levels of government, as well as all private organizations and individuals, to give their highest support to those who undertake preservation with private means. The projects and programs we're recognizing today reflect many forms of these independent endeavors. They're corporate-sponsored projects, programs featuring extensive cooperation between businesses and nonprofit organizations, and overall a high level of independent initiative. Over the past 20 years, private enterprise has shown an increasing awareness of the advantages in preservation. Working independently, these organizations and individuals have maintained and adapted historic resources for modern use. Rehabilitation projects have provided facilities for businesses, housing, and community centers. Obviously, many programs unrelated to historic preservation have benefited from the creative use of our older resources. In an earlier time, many thought that preservation work was expensive, time-consuming, and limited in its outcome. We have evidence in this room to prove that notion false. In fact, well-informed, planned, and coordinated enterprises prove that you can show cost-effective results and generate social and economic benefits beyond the original scope of the project. The renovation of one building can inspire similar undertakings in the surrounding area and result in overall neighborhood improvement.
all personal resources to further the goals. There only stands as inspiration for all of us. And now, for the fun part, let me ask you something. Would that like to just go out to <laughs> Nantucket Island Town Center Revitalization and Preservation. Nantucket Historic Town Center is a fine example of how private enterprise cooperated with nonprofit organization to preserve the architectural and natural heritage of the island. Accepting the award is Walter Beinecke, Jr., President of the Board of Nantucket Historic Trust. The Newell K. Whitney General Store Restoration in Kirtland, Ohio, was the town's largest general store in the 1830s. Joseph Smith, Jr., founder of the, and first president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, lived with his family in the upstairs apartment. There he taught and developed the doctrines of the church. The building was purchased by the church and restored as a museum. Accepting the award is John Carmack, managing director of the historic department of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Philadelphia Historic Preservation Corporation Facade Easement Program. In the nine years since it was started, this easement holding organization has acquired 117 facade easements on buildings that are valued at more than half a billion dollars. This program has influenced the development of valuable real estate in the city, and the income generated from the facade easement program has been used to establish preservation planning in Philadelphia. Accepting the award is William Blades, Executive Vice President of the Philadelphia Historic Preservation Corporation. Preservation Techniques Incorporated Conservation Technology Educational Program. This nonprofit organization in Philadelphia is dedicated to finding the most cost effective ways of restoring and maintaining commercial buildings. Its comprehensive education and awareness program keeps a diverse target audience informed of how the goals of free enterprise and preservation can be achieved through mutual beneficial means. Accepting the award is Gersel McKay, Chairman of Preservation Techniques Incorporated. The Shelburne House Rehabilitation. Shelburne House, a seasonal public inn near Burlington, Vermont, is a Queen Anne-style residence built in the late 19th century as one of the three main buildings on the Shelburne Farms estate. The house was designed as a private home and guest house and has been renovated as an inn through private contributions. Accepting the award is Marilyn Webb, president of Shelburne Farms. Our final recipient is Technology and Conservation Magazine. This magazine was created because the organizers recognized the need for a periodical to provide easily accessible information on technological developments in the science and engineering fields that could be applied to historic preservation. This privately funded magazine, published in Boston, focuses on technical aspects of conservation and preservation. Accepting the award is Susan Schur, publisher and editor of Technology and Conservation.
That, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our program. A final round of applause, if you will, for all the recipients. Thank you very much, Mr. President.